The Reef Therapy Podcast is powered by ICP Analysis. If you'd like to win a free saltwater ICP analysis kit and a freshwater analysis kit, all you have to do is leave a comment down below using the hashtag what's in your water. If you're listening to the audio only version, head on over to YouTube and you can enter in the comment section there. ICP analysis will test over 50 elements down to parts per trillion. These tests can also be used to see if there's any undesirable elements in your aquarium as well. Register your aquarium on the ICP analysis app, fill your sample, place it back into the bag, slap on that included postage, and have your results one to three days after it's received. More at icpanalysis.com. Hey, Reef Builders, welcome to episode number 89 of the Reef Therapy Podcast. We're so close to 5,000 subs, and that's all I want for Christmas. So if you could uh, subscribe on the YouTube channel, uh, that would be awesome. If you could like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when we upload new videos. Today, Richard Ross is back on. Uh, Richard, I have your two-timer award at the printing press right now. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Usually, two-timer means something else, but I'll take it. You know, uh, this time, yes, it just means a t-shirt. So, um, uh, some super exciting stuff going on in your little laboratory right there, literally as we speak. But uh, I want to go around the horn and see how everybody else is doing, since I believe most of the podcast will kind of be focusing on on your your things that you're doing. Raj, how is your blown glass squid lights coming along there? <laughs> the blown glass has proven to be way more challenging than I gave credit for. So I have not received a single piece yet. Tell Richard uh, what it, this is, by the way. Oh, because I okay. I'm a glass blower, you idiot. So I I know you are, but so you know who Chihuly is. I do. Okay. Okay. So the did you buy a Chihuly? Was, yes, I totally bought a Chihuly with with all the spare change in my sofa. Mm. Uh, the concept was to copy that style and make my reef fixture look like a Chihuly. Uh, thingy mabobber. What do you what do you call it? A chandelier. A, ch a chihuly chandelier. Ch chihuly. chihuly. I, I'm never going to get that right. I, That's I think okay. I just need to make it a thing where I call it something different every time. Gagooly. Yes. You. Great googly moogly. <laughs> so the chihuly uh, chandelier that masks the reef lights that go inside of it. So it's, you know, just not your regular reef look and kind of jazzes it up a bit. And so I was going to make the fixture myself, put the reef lights in it, and then add the Chihuly glass to it. And okay. Yeah. So that's where and, I'm at with that. And, and I, I don't have the glass yet. Who's making your to, glass? It's not me, obviously. Clearly. So it's <laughs> just reached out to, you know, some local glass blowers and they're like, yeah, we could totally do that. And yeah. so far. Are you it has totally not been done. <laughs> you got a bunch of good glass blowers in that area, so you're you're you'll be fine. I'm going to send you an email. Okay. <laughs> 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 I may need some uh, San Francisco special. And not, no, I'm, I'm not a, talking about the street poop. Some Bay Area special. I don't live some in Bay the street area. poop city. I live. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm I'm street poo adjacent. <laughs> It's close enough. That, I'm happy that we started both podcasts with Street Poop. So, <laughs> <laughs> number two, number two, number two. Right, let's go. Now, I, I yeah. think if you had it blown, I think if you had the glass blown in San Francisco, you just have you know something to smoke cannabis out of, You'd just and be poof, cover probably, up your light. Lights. Probably, I, I'm pretty sure that the reason my glass hasn't been done yet is because they're probably busy smoking anyway. Yeah. Well, it's it's not yeah. like it's um you know the holiday season uh and you know it's not like one of the things glass blowers make in the holiday season is ornaments and it's not like they're trying to sell everything they can for gifts <laughs> this month. They want to do your chandelier. So, I'm sure they're on it. They, they paying, certainly don't want I am paying for it. My single sale is better than their tchotchke little mm. bullshit ornaments i back off right. you know you know what i realized i i didn't yeah. rinse this <laughs> i'm drinking spawn water coke <laughs> fantastic um <laughs> yeah they'll get back to you then if you if you are paying them they'll they'll figure it out It'll yeah work. yeah they'll they'll, yeah. they'll do it it's just a time thing 
I mean, it's not like I'm in any sort of huge rush, but I am getting antsy to get uh, get this build going. What color glass are you having them do, or colors? Uh, blue and white to kind of give that aquatic theme. Got it. Yeah. And it, and they said you know there'll be some like really cool variations in the color and and whatnot. So that I'm looking forward gonna, to it. We we're not going to be yeah. precise with your stuff, so enjoy. Exactly what I figured. <laughs> But I think it'll look cool either way, right? The, the yeah, very, no. I mean, it's not going to vary from like blue to red. It's just going to be different shades of blue and maybe some, I don't know, glass blowy stuff. Yeah. And it's totally yeah. one of those things that people don't do. And so it's very cool that you're doing it. Let's let's well, make, let's make this fixture let's... look awesome instead of. Look, it's two black things hanging uh, above the tent. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, that that was the concept, right? To make it <laughs> uh, make it look a little bit different. Uh, I love to it. Make it. I don't know. Make it more designery because I'm so like designer guy. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> so how's the rest of the tank coming? Have you have you done anything else, or are you just waiting on those lights now? No, no, no. I made. Uh, I've mapped out everything now. The sump is almost done. I made a last minute change to the front, so we had to kind of have this big delay while I sorted that out and did the drawings and refigured how to do that all so uh, but that's going to look really cool i'm excited about that found a good spot for the skimmer that's going to be a lot easier for me to access because the original spot was just going to be super tight and i was hating it the whole time and i i gave in and i said you know what i i have to focus on the at uh, on the access because if i can not access it i'm not going to maintain it properly i'm bad with keeping up with that anyway so the easier I make it, the better it's going to be. So figured out that spot. Um, what else? ATO. Got the ATO sorted out and got the new Tunzi Osmolator 3 on the way. Super psyched about that because I've been using those Osmolators forever. And I don't know if you guys saw my tree last Christmas tree last year, but I got this ridiculously ginormous tree. Because back when I was a little kid, this is what I wanted was this huge tree. And I got one a few years back, and it was huge, and it was fantastic. And so you got to go bigger. And so I went bigger last year. And it ended up being a total nightmare because it was way too big. And I had to buy all these commercial lights and ornaments, ginormous ornaments, because the regular ornaments look like nothing. And I jammed this thing inside the house. Um, and to water it, it takes a lot of water to water a tree that large. Um, so this is a, cause this is a real tree. This is a real tree. Okay. Yes. That was a real tree. It was 20 feet tall. Oh um, <laughs> Sorry it about took up the entire <laughs> foyer. Like it was, it was giant. And, um, so I hooked up an osmolator to an auto top off system to top off the tree because there's no way awesome. we're going to lug gallons of water underneath the tree to get in there. Because you, you had to really crawl under the trees. I think it was about 17, 18 inches in diameter or something like that. It was big. It was a big boy. Man. Yeah. The way that real trees cost these days, that's probably like $3,000 tree. <laughs> <laughs> no, we chopped it down. We went to the... Uh, we went to the um, Christmas tree farm here, and they they charge per foot, I guess. Oh, okay. And it wasn't that bad. I mean, it was more than an eight foot tree, but <laughs> a lot By less double. than you would By it, double. put it this way: the lighting alone costs way more than the damn tree. Ugh, dude, lights yeah. are ridiculous. I left myself a note last year as we were putting up the Christmas trees, and I opened the box, and it it said trees need new lights, and I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> the worst so yeah totally good i put uh, my old halides yeah. on my tree nice 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 it's a it's That's... a the, the it, it uh, the best color is the awasaki hands down the tree looks Absolutely. better than anything else yeah. and there's it's, no it's not fire a fire danger. hazard at all yeah nope. not at all nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Okay, so you're you're still in kind of uh in build mode. I really want to go back to the first time that we started this podcast and you started this build and then just calculate how many days you've been working on this thing. We you know that, that we shouldn't do that. It's, <laughs> that's like 
checking your power bill and calculating <laughs> how much of that is, is attributed to the aquarium. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, what kind of skimmer are you going to run? Mm. <laughs> Thanks for asking. It's this great <laughs> company based in Atlanta. They do these really, really awesome skimmers. Tons of stuff for the public aquarium world. You might have heard of them since you used to work at Steinhardt. Did. Yeah. Oh, so, and, and so you're getting them to do stuff for you personally. Yeah, 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 yeah. I called in a favor. I know a guy there. And so I was like, hey, bro. Can you hook it up? I need one of those sweet MRC skimmers on my reef. Do you guys yeah. do small skimmers? I thought everything you did was like eight feet tall. <laughs> no, we've got smaller skimmers, but I wouldn't say we do small skimmers. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, thanks for clarifying that. Um, <laughs> 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 I can't. I really, I can't wait to see it. I really can't. We're a little, a little, a little slap happy tonight. I like it. Uh, I fired up the generator today. I went out to the garage and I, I, I went out and you know pulled that thing out into the driveway and just let her rip to see if that thing still worked. It does, which is good. Um, nice. Just a little, uh, little reminder if you've got a generator that you haven't turned on in a while. It's you know winter is coming for those of you that live in not San Francisco. Um, you know, we might we might have some power outages. My, I'm sure my my neighbors thought it was weird because it's like 60 today here in St. Louis, and I've got not only that, but I pulled the carburetor off the snowblower and I cleaned everything out, <laughs> and I've got the snowblower running in the driveway, the generator. Everybody thinks that like a winter storm is coming, and I'm I, I've done this too many times where it's negative, you know, 10 outside, and I'm out there trying to clean the carburetor and everything, and it just does not work. So I decided to do that on 65 degree day. So winter is coming. Perfect. Do you have a plan? Winter is coming. That is my question. I have a plan. Uh, the Red Sea is maintaining right now. I think I need to do my nice. first big water change. It's been three months. You think it's time? Uh, maybe. <laughs> There's just not That's a about whole the lot. schedule I'm usually in. There's just not a whole lot in there, so I'm not like like super i mean I, I think i think we probably need to replenish some some of the elements just because i'm not dosing anything either at this point so i think calquasser is on deck next and then um we'll start to build from there but uh, i think I, I just need to do a, a good water change on that thing um obviously the corals in there aren't huge most of them are you know little frags but how do we feel about purple tanks guys I like purple tanks. They're okay. they're a bit dickish, but I like them. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. All right, that's what my yeah. daughter wants. Can... <laughs> oh, if your daughter wants it, you have to have it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah At so... least your daughter. My daughter liked Chromis. That's Oof. what my son wanted. So we have a Chromis, and my... <laughs> I went to the LFS, and Steve, uh, the owner, was like. Well, your uh, son and daughter have different tastes in fish. <laughs> uh, here's a twenty dollar bill for one of them, and uh, we're gonna need far more for that for uh, for the purple tank. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, everybody that I've talked to is like, yeah, it's probably gonna turn out to be a dick eventually. Um, I have a Dijardini in there that I recently got. Um, oh, jeez. And uh, I'm not sure if I want to put another one in. Do I need to have an odd number? Is is a is too fine? Is too too many? I don't, these are things because you know you see all these tanks with guys with 15 different yellow tanks, and you know. So are there rules? Are there rules anymore? I don't know. There's rules, but yeah, the odd and even thing is not really a thing. I like odd just because even seems really weird to me. So I always go with odd numbers, but the fish don't care. They're not counting. Yeah. No, they're either going to be awful or not. And uh, yeah. <laughs> that's got nothing to do with anything. They'll be, you know, they're like six line rasses. Wow, what a model citizen. Oh, why did you kill everything? You know, it's just, <laughs> it's just a switch flips. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I'm hoping that because it's a relatively new tank, all of the the tanks that come into the LFS are usually smaller. Um, I believe it's about the same size. The purple is about the same size as the Dijardini. I have a Tomini that I've had in here for six years, or I've had for about six years. I know it's not the same shape, but um, everybody seems to be getting along right now, which is good. Just got a assessor, Basslet. Oh, uh, nice. Don't see how him, old, so that's cool. <laughs> how old's your daughter? She's eight. So what's yeah. a fish that you want for that tank? Uh, 
I mean, I, I did want, I wanted a Tang gang a little bit. Oh, okay. Um, so the purple Tang isn't, isn't too far out of the okay. realm. I really want. Because I was going to say, just get whatever you want and lie to her. That tell her that's a purple tank. <laughs> this is a purple. This is what it looks like, honey. <laughs> She's eight. It's juvenile, <laughs> right? It's juvenile. It'll that's morph. The thing is, is kids these days have Alexa, and they will go to Alexa oh. and be like, "Show me a purple yeah. tank," and then it's over. I don't well, know then how you many questions come. that they that's ask fucking... Alexa on a daily basis. It's insane. It's perfect. That's why you're teaching them not to trust AI. <laughs> 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 you believe? You believe her? She's not always right. She doesn't know anything about fish. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with the Red Sea. Um, it's Are you going to do yellow tanks? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I, I kind of want to put the purple in. Maybe a couple other fish here and there. And then just let it rest for a little bit. I just want to rest, see, see where we're at. You know, because we're in that roller coaster period this first year. We're in, you know, month three at this point. So... You know, once we get some things under control, the nitrate train is just phosphates or, you know, so we're, we're riding that that whole thing now. But I, I was I was telling um, uh, Jason in the last podcast that it's nice to have tangs that are just like picking at the rocks all day long. It's yeah. so nice coming from the nano tank world where at this point the whole freaking thing would be covered with hair algae and you'd just be like losing your mind having to manually remove this until the tank, you know, evens out a little bit so it's been nice who knows Ooh. it might still be coming uh are you getting we'll any see. cool critters from your live rock um i have not checked but i have a crab an unidentified crab in the sump <laughs> that came from the sand and i didn't realize how many different species of crabs there are in the caribbean um but i've had anything from you know the monster crabs that like emerge from the water and hang out in the sand to I, someone said it was a pom-pom i don't think pom-poms are in the caribbean um i could be wrong on that but it's still pretty small it's still juvenile but i think the the most the the characteristic of it that stands out for me the most is that it has on its legs it's kind of red and white striped um, I don't know if that's a juvenile trait or if that changes Ooh. over time, but that's the most characteristic thing at this point. But I can't get a good picture of him. That's the, that's the trouble. He's in the sump, right? Yeah, yeah. I can't. I, okay. I I need to like, I need to catch him and kind of pull him up closer to the water so I can get a good picture, and then we'll uh, yep, we'll be able to identify. But uh, yeah, so everything's kind of maintaining right now. I know that a lot of people are gone, you know, family gatherings and, you know, going to be leaving their tanks for a while. And I ended up getting one of these. Uh, it's called Fish Nosh. <laughs> it's an automatic feeder. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, just so the fish are fed while we're gone. What um, uh, What's so awesome about that feeder? What's awesome? Yeah, it's, it's simple. Um, is, it, is it a drum feeder or an yes. auger? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Nothing. Nothing too fancy. It gets the job done at this point. Yep. I don't know if I will want because a lot of these, a lot of the companies are coming out with you know fish feeders that hook up to the your controllers and all of that stuff. And this is very much not that. This runs on three AA batteries. Um, but this gets the job done right now. I know. I think GHL has one coming out. Uh, and I know obviously uh, Neptune does. But uh, yeah, I. Uh, I got a, a, a vast marine keg, which is the top of the plank feeder, um, and I love it. Okay, love, love, love it. I just it, got their uh, calc their calcster. You can't uh, you can't knock the drum off with your elbow into the tank, and um, <laughs> and because it's an auger feeder, it oh. always feeds the same amount. Period. Instead of you know. Those right. openings on the drum feeders getting blocked up by the humidity and stuff. Yep. Yeah. They make some yeah. good stuff. They've got they've got yeah. some quality stuff there. I like um, I like the quality. I, I I just got the K1 calcster from a buddy who was not using it, and uh, I just had to replace the motor on it, and that was cool. twenty dollars. So pretty easy. Nice. Get that yeah. Thing Justin's been doing this stuff for a while now, right? Yeah. He's been yeah. L at least 15 years yeah i think and it's great stuff 
I also love yeah. the idea that they give you that, that you can purchase it for less as a kit and build it yourself. Yeah. And it's super easy to do. And they've got like step-by-step -step guides on how to do everything. But I mean, you could save yourself 50 bucks on a Calcster. If you See, really want to go a, that route. As a business, I didn't, I wouldn't like to offer that because then because they mess the it up. quality, <laughs> yes, right? Like the quality of the build is dependent on the end user. And if you do a terrible job, that's my brand that is now represented by your crappy assembly job. And it's always going to be the person that does the worst job that posts the most pictures uh, <laughs> online about it. And so then when anybody Googles it, right, <laughs> it's going to look like crap. And they're like, wow, that, that brand is trash. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. from a budget consumer and, you know, Tinkler that, or Tinkerer, not Tinkler, Tinkerer. I like Tinkler better. Uh, me like too. To, Let's go with Tinkler. <laughs> we'll go with Tinkler. Okay. Because you might tinkle on it after the job, but <laughs> as the Tinkler, uh, I like it because obviously you get to do it. You get that the whole experiential part of it is cool, and you save fifty bucks, and that's yeah. fifty bucks you can spend on. I don't know what can you get for fifty bucks. Fifty dollars worth of calcwasser. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> or, or fifty dollars worth of anything, really. Yeah. <laughs> right. Candy you can buy your wife some flowers. Fifty dollars worth. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's get into the actual meat and potatoes i richard i talked to i talked to jamie craggs on thanksgiving morning yeah uh and I, apparently they don't celebrate thanksgiving in they, england not at all <laughs> um and he was like you want to meet on thursday and i was like uh sure i mean nothing's nothing's happening before we eat anyway so <laughs> you know my mom's got it. She's good, you know. <laughs> so I, 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 the house is so loud, and I, I took the call in my car. So I went out to the car, <laughs> and he was showing me just the craziest stuff. And I'm so excited uh, to hear everything that's going on in your lab right now, as we speak. It, like during, you're waiting on a spawn to happen that could happen in about an hour from now. Take us through what's going on. What's spawning and all of the details? Um, I'm sorry. I'm so tired. Um, <laughs> How many every, spawns have you already had this week? This uh, three. Okay. So that's pretty awesome. Three. And that's early. So I don't, we don't, we're, we're a little confused with what's going on this year. Um, things have been going early for people. Um, so sometimes have... that happens, okay? <laughs> it's the little blue pill that I got <laughs> from um, some company that I don't want to name. I don't and know. There's low hanging fruit right, right there. Yeah, well, it's, so it. what's what's actually happening here? I've got um, two tanks with corals that are should be spawning this month and uh, or last month. So we monitor. I monitored last month as well. So what I've got is gravids. I'm pointing to this big black thing. There's they're behind there. That's the light shade. Um, and that's Acropora millipora in there, collected as gravids from the Great Barrier Reef. Um, five of those went. There's six more that didn't go. Um, and I expect them to go in the next few days. And I have no idea why they went early. Uh, and then up there, I have Acropora hyacinthus that I raised from the spawn in 2020. Um, that had eggs two week, two, a month and a half ago. So those should spawn as well. And those I'm even more excited about because then it's like closing the life cycle. It's straight F2 kind of stuff, um, which is not something I really ever considered for Acropora in, you know, cause the timeline to get them to spawn seems like it's a long time, but uh, you know, from, from, from a single settled polyp, you know, two and a half, three years ago to, They've got eggs, absolutely. So Crazy. if they spawn, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, How big is the colony now? There's four colonies, and they're about the size of my hand. So they're definitely big enough. And then it's uh, then it's all kinds of math and trying to figure out when everything's going to go. 
And, um, you know, every time I talk about this, I always feel like such a whiner, but it's, it's, it's the amount of stuff that you have to do. And like each thing is no big deal. But like last night I stood here for an hour and a half like this <laughs> <laughs> because everything had to change. Cause we spawned last week. So I had, um, developing corals bouncing around up here in the incubators, but now I need to make room because if both of these go, I'm out of room and it's about time to let them start to settle. So today I set up the settling tray down below and moved a whole lot of the baby corals down to there and then did some documenting. But it was like, okay, so if I'm putting the settling tank in one of these two bins, do I put it in the top bin or the bottom bin and why? And what does that mean in three weeks? You know, so it was like, if, if I wanted to put it up here because in case the other species doesn't spawn, I'm not on my knees now to deal with the corals down on the, <laughs> on the lower level, but it couldn't be that way because if everything goes, it has to be this way. So yeah. it's just, um, and then it's just, a, I don't know, a, I don't think it is this way for Jamie, but for like me and Rebecca Albright here in the States, it's just a time of madness. It's just, you know, when are they going to go? Why are they going to go? Why, why, why should these corals go off at the same time of day? for five years what okay i th i'm into a total you've got me in babble world for for people listening they asked me to be on the show yesterday <laughs> and i said what time and they said seven o'clock and i said oh well that's going to be tough because that's seven right Eastern. when if they're going to go off yeah you never said that raj um, and then I got a I am text posting screenshots. <laughs> I got a, I got the email today at <laughs> four something my time. And I kind of went, Oh, did they mean seven their time? I can do that because the corals, if they're going to spawn tonight, they're going to be spawning at seven. Um, so I'm just kind of out of it. It's just a lot of this. So the, the millipora that you got, did you, did you get that this year? Like, yeah, are, are these those... came. Yeah, they came. I had uh, um, Joe at Unique Corals got them, sourced them for me. Uh, they arrived late for various reasons. So I'm a little, that might have something to do with why they went early, but who knows? Yeah, um, yeah. so that was great. That's a pain to get them. You got to get them on time. Oh, for some reason, they wanted to, they came to me via Southwest. And Southwest up here call, thinks I need to have a, fish and wildlife inspection or an agriculture inspection on the corals that are shipped domestically to this area. And they held them overnight. They oh, wouldn't release wow. them to me. And I can't find any information about it. I called ag and they said, Oh, we'll talk to fish and wildlife. I talked to fish and wildlife. Fish and wildlife says, we don't have anything to do with that. <laughs> and now neither <laughs> of them will answer me. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I, I get that too. Cause if they get pinned down, then they have to do something. Yeah. Um, so, so maybe we'll what maybe if, we'll pick what eventually them. happened with Southwest. They just... um, I was able to get a hold of inspector the next day or that that night or that early that morning, and the inspector came that next morning, and everything was okay because because um, Joe's place does a really nice job of packing. But that was an unpleasant night. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Corals are ten minutes away from my house. I saw the boxes; they wouldn't give them to me. Uh, I think they think that corals are being imported to their place, you know, to Southwest Cargo in Oakland. And that's why they are asking for an inspection. Gotcha. I guess that makes more, I, more sense here in California. You know, that I get maybe there could be a yeah. mix up there. But, but, there's, but it's also like, I, I just want to show me what I need to do because... I never would have expect, you know, never would I have thought something that I'm going to, so if, if I could put it on FedEx and have it to my house with no inspection, I don't see why I would need air yeah. cargo to have an inspection. It's already legally in the country. This is a weird thing. So, but I want to know the rules uh, so I can follow them next time. And, you know, luckily I didn't get these shipped in on Friday afternoon because then they would have sat till Monday. Right. Yeah. Um, but they can't show me any 
any documentation on that either. So I'm probably going to have to just let if, it go. You would you would think if anybody knows where those corals have come from, you it would be the airlines because they have the paperwork that says these went from LAX to Oakland. Right. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Government. We had yeah. uh, so Jason Brown was on the podcast last week, and he said he had a spawn in his tank. It, Sweet. He thinks he thinks it was Ostera. Okay. Um, and he said it was a couple weeks ago, but he wasn't sure if that was on time. And I said, well, I feel like, you know, everybody's kind of having some spawning events going on right now. And obviously, if you're not trying, if that's not something that, you know, you're you're syncing up your your lunar schedule with or anything like that, you know, it's, it's totally possible that that went a little earlier than it should have. But he said it's happened, you know, he said it happened back in May as well. So I don't know if yeah. that's any insight for you. Yeah, um, and he he had um, torches go right. No, 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 he, he no, no, no. That. I'm sorry, confusing. Astera, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Um, don't know. Uh, and he's had those corals for. Um, <laughs> he's had those corals a long time, right? Yeah, yeah. I think I talked to him. I'm pretty sure I talked to him. Yeah, um, trying to figure out what's going on. Um, and then he said he had a moonlight, and then I asked him about the moonlight, and he said, "Oh, it wasn't even working." So I, I, I who, 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 we don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah I love, I love that. Like you, who studies this, doesn't you know? You there's so much left to learn. I guess is what I'm getting at. You know, there's there's still so much mystery that surrounds this. Not only the hobby, but like you know, coral spawning in general why at seven o'clock you're going to be up pressed up against your tank because you know that it, it's happened the past five years or whatever you know right right and i i yes i know when mine are going to go because that's when they go right you know the first time i watched them for two weeks and we were done watching and i watched the next day and that that's when they went so it's like oh you you have to you have to leave this window open so you can catch it if you're trying to catch it and then you can build on that. But but you're absolutely right. We we know what's going on. And we don't know what's going on. Right. In the wild, these corals would go like four or five days after the full moon. But for me, reliably, uh, 12 or 13 days after. And there's there's something going on with the moonlight programming. Right. I don't know how that's actually being done. It doesn't actually make uh, uh, anything. It doesn't make the real moonrise and moonset timeline as the microprocessor does its calculation. It's it's not actually what's happening. Um, and it's a little bit hard to pin down what the spaces are and what it's actually doing because it's kind of right. Yeah. Um, so part of me just goes, I don't care to do a programming hunt and figure this out i know 12 or 13 days after the full moon these should go I'm, that's all i need to do but yeah you're right there's so much we just don't really understand and it's so new that you know at least for me i only you know get one chance at it a year because uh, it's in my house um i don't want to screw it up too much from what i did last year so every every stage of it is is uh pretty stressful but it's fun stress but but it does make me tired yeah, every jamie, step is like double the work yeah jamie was showing me some really cool slides of um of the embryonic state of the coral and him determining that chimeras were happening at that embryonic nice. state and he was showing me the fusion between two embryos and how that happens more often probably in the aquarium because there's just less space than the ocean right yeah um but wow. he's like i i tried this with scolemia and i picked just like the, the poopiest brown scolemias he's like but if i would have chosen master scoli we would have had some crazy looking colors you know it just it feels like we're on the verge of clownfish crazy variations but in coral right i, I sure hope so <laughs> i mean you know the, the 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 call you know both jamie and i've been doing is like people got to do this you know you're you're a crazy hobbyist already why aren't you trying this 
Yeah. You know, and um, it's funny. I I posted something about coral spawning somewhere or somebody posted on a forum or something. And I got linked to see it. It was it was the the piece you guys ran on on my the video from last year's spawn that I made. Yes. And so um, they were asking questions, so I was answering questions. And you know, one of the comments was like, "Well, you know, this will never be viable. You know, this will you know this they take too long to raise and they're too hard to do. And you know, we'll never not collect them from the wild." And I said, like, "That's what they said about clownfish in 2000. You know, when we yeah. had no idea." And it was really hard. And now you can't throw them away fast enough. That's not really true. People aren't throwing away their fish. <laughs> they are. Um, okay. So, yeah, I think we'll, we'll crack it. And I think we're going to find out. I think I, I, I sure hope and feel like it will probably get easier than we're making it now. We, you know, we will figure out a couple of key things. You know, for instance, I think you could probably put it on. Whatever schedule you want for six, eight, nine months of the year, um, as long as there's a temperature range in there, and then the last three months of that year, then you start really caring about the light. Yeah. But, couple, you know, we'll a couple, see. A couple misconceptions that I had when I first kind of started going down this path and looking into it even more was one of them being that the corals had to come, like they had to be gravid from like you had to get them from Australia and they had to know that there was eggs present, but that is not the case. Like you, you can just get a couple different millies and that will eventually just happen. Correct. Yeah. Uh, and what, what happens is people set up a spawning or a facility sets up a spawning thing and they spend a whole bunch of money on it. And then it's like, we need results now. <laughs> you know, we don't have a year to wait. Um, so you get gravids. It's not uh it's not the easiest thing to get, but you can do it. Uh, yeah. But 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 yes, um, you just put them on a cycle for a year, and it should be it should happen. Uh, I'm gonna put my main display on a cycle. Uh, I just realized I just figured out it's like oh yeah they have to go in January because if they if they went in December when I'm doing these as well unless I shift these back a few months I'll lose my mind um, <laughs> and then I. But then I've been threatening to do that. But as soon as I have that cycle, I'm going to put it out because, <laughs> you know, Sanjay wants to use it. And more people might as well, whoever has an apex, might as well set their season table to some kind of season, make a prediction about when they think the corals might spawn and check. And we can learn a whole lot really quick, mm -hmm. you know, because it's like, you know, well, what did you do? Well, I just had the moonlight setting. OK, and that worked. And then we can build on that. And it's going to be something random too, right? It's always something that's an accident, right. a happy accident that comes around yeah, and they're like, wow, like, oh. I, I was able to do it in this because something fell in the tank. Right. And then you figure out, oh, that added phosphorus and it gave a spike of that and just some yeah. weird circumstances. So I'm kind of psyched about that part of it is that it's going to be something really, really dumb that is the key to unlocking it to a certain extent. I mean, I, I think there's still going to be a lot of mystery. We'll never yeah. truly know why when you move it to the other side of the planet, did it pick 5 p.m. on a certain day every year? I mean, you know, you're, you can kind of, we're kind of guessing and we're, we kind of have it, but yeah. Really. And it's, and it's also, you know, it's, you move them to the other side of the world, but to make the spawning prediction, you've got to then make the lighting like the other side of the world, yeah. right? So it's not, right. I don't want people to get the wrong idea that you just get corals and they spawn. That that does happen. But, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a little more than that. I, I, I think. It is, but there's so many different factors. Yeah, and I'm just doing know. two species, right? And all the species yeah. are different. You know, Jamie is, you know, Jamie's at an institution that supports this kind of work and they're, they've gone crazy and it's awesome. So uh, definitely turn to Jamie for crazy specifics. I'm just trying to figure out what I can tell hobbyists to do to make their lives as simple as possible. That's what I'd like. Um, because, you know, like you said, we need somebody to go, huh, I'm about to take this ED pill. What if I put this in the coral tank and see what happens? <laughs> that would be a waste of a pill. In you 
<laughs> they spawn immediately. Or so you think, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, you uh, need the, he, the the red field ratio of estrogen to testosterone. <laughs> See, maybe those corals just grow bigger. Hmm? Maybe, maybe yeah. for longer, maybe. For, longer for longer, and you know, but for <laughs> anything for four over hours. four hours. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, y'all know too much. About this. Um, I think another misconception that I had, and you know maybe some beginners that are listening to this or maybe even intermediate and advanced. You can't save the ocean. You can't save the reefs by doing this. Uh, Jamie stressed biosecurity up and down. And that is one thing that if we're doing this on a hobbyist level, then these are staying in the hobby. Correct? Yeah. These are for us. Yeah. Once you, you know, yeah. So Mark Rober, that's a weird, that's a weird left turn. That is, um, did a video about an octopus. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty okay. He, he, you know, he did a couple things that made me go, uh, but most of it, he was, he was right on, but it was a, a California two spot octopus that he got from a store. And then he did his maze with it. It's really cool. And then he let it go. And it's like, Ooh, Ooh, was it in tanks with Indo animals when it was in the store? Because if that's what it was, you, you, probably shouldn't have let it go yeah yeah right because it's been exposed to all kinds of other stuff um but yeah you know these nothing in my tank's ever going to go back in the ocean unless things get really really bad uh and we don't care anymore uh but other than that you know nope you know we brought corals from palau back to the academy and people are like oh you're going to send the babies back to palau i was like no <laughs> no because you know we can't yeah, yeah. but um boy oh boy can we make a lot of corals for us and it's super cool i you know it, it's it's cooler than it is easy and we like things that are cooler than are easy that's kind of <laughs> what we do in the hobby so i'm really hoping more people will just throw a a, a schedule on their tank and see what happens because it might go and the first year you do it you know i think finally we got sanjay on board um, but you know, I don't, we don't know if he's got any, um, different genotypes, right? So you got to have a mommy and a daddy of different genetics for most corals, for many corals, sorry, I'm generalizing, um, for them to, um, fertilize. If you, you know, you can't take a frag of your beefy blue stag and let it grow out. And then you think they're, it's the same, it's the same animal. You need two different genetic types for them to make babies that'll work. So the first year it might just be, look, it worked, which yeah. is a big deal. Yeah. And then you can go, wow, that worked. I better get me some, and you know, another another piece of all these four corals that I have or whatever to make sure I have at least one different, uh, uh, two different uh, genetic lines. So, so we but, have. So we. So he showed me a, a photo of a. A blue and green acro. I'm not sure which species it was, but uh, and you know it's it looks grafted. It's got all the bleed the bleeding greens and blues. And he had suggested that that was actually just two animals living as one. Mm -hmm. um, is that because I feel like that that's the biggest one of the biggest questions with these grafted corals is do they become one? Does the DNA sequencing change? Is it just two animals living in the same you know colony? Do we know anything about that? I, I don't know anything about that, uh, I, except for what I've experienced with that. So and my experience would make me think that, well, I'm going to hedge all over the place because I don't know what I'm talking about. But it seems to me like they're two different animals living together. I know when I get corals that settle gregariously, same species, but different parents, sometimes they get along, sometimes they kill each other. Right? Hmm. So this year... I got to turn and look just because they're there. The babies from last year, about four or five months ago, maybe six months ago, I went in and looked at them really good and went, oh, God, because there was two different, there were different, clearly different corals fighting each other. You know, they were not one happy family. They were overlapping or, you know, some, you know, like, like play tectonics going down. And so I threw them on the bandsaw and chopped them all up. And uh, then they all started going, wee, instead of fighting, they were like, let's grow. So they're all, 
you know, they all look like corals now, where before it was like, wow, they're, they're just, it turned out they were just fighting. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that that happens a lot, but for them to get together and not kill each other is pretty cool. But yeah. to actually answer your question, I don't know. Maybe no one knows. Maybe you'll be the one to find out. <laughs> That's right. Do you have a, a DNA sequencing device? Uh, <laughs> you have access to this? <laughs> Only twelve year olds. Sanjay does. Uh, yeah, I bet Sanjay does. <laughs> yeah, it's his right? tongue. Yeah. Yes. Besides, uh, the ja- tongue Jamie test. said that it was very cost prohibitive um, to test that stuff. Genetic, oh, sure. Yeah. Even yeah. Even at this f- point, even for him, even for yeah. the institute. Well, I think it's more likely because you're at that institute that you can even just get it done. Um, if you were right. just going to pay for it, yikes, that seems expensive. Yeah. So, I don't know. So, so you have a spawn, you've got all these bundles, then what? Uh, so you collect the bundles. I collect them by just skimming them off the surface. Um, and then you, I just make soup, right? Because I'm not trying to do genetic crosses or anything like that. I just want, I'm a, I'm, I'm being an aquarist. I'm I'm keeping stuff alive. That's my job. My job is not to keep the special things alive. My stuff, get everything alive. I want all these babies to live. Um, so I just make a soup rather than making a whole bunch of soups. Um, you you make sh- oh, wow. I'm getting my own way. Basically, you just uh, you you make sure you have a container that's got the amount of sperm you want from all the different colonies that have spawned. And um, you get it to like that lemonade color is what everyone talks about. And then I add all the eggs to that. So I've got one bucket of soup of of sperm and egg soup um, that looks like lemonade. And then uh, then you let that sit for an hour or two. And then you decant them very gently into a place where they can uh, float around and be happy and not uh, crushed or killed or filtered. Uh, and then they, they start developing like immediately. And then by the next day, they've uh, already 12 hours. They've done their what's called the prawn chip stage photo here. Or, um, you know, then they because they they start to split. Right. And they cleave and then they look like a potato chip. And then they round up again into a, like a ball and start spinning around, which is when you freak out if the first time you do it. Because you go, oh, my God, why are they round again? Because they're supposed to be. And then they get a little longer and then they start, they elongate and then they start settling. So it's, it's just getting through each part of that. So I've got, I don't have one here that I can show you. I'm sorry. I've got one in the other room. I don't really want to see it, but it's a, I I should get it. I should get it. This is stupid. Definitely. Also get a photo of the potato chip. So I don't have to edit that in. I've got one for you. <laughs> He's like, photo here. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I need to write this down. <laughs> I knew exactly what I was doing. <laughs> so once the corals are fertilized, I've got uh, this. It's just a bucket with some 500, 200 micron mesh mesh on some couple of windows. I'm actually going to throw these away and do them a different way next year. I had a couple flashes of new ways to do it, but we'll have to see if they really work. And then these just float in a tub. I made a water table this year because I'm out of space to use in the tanks. And I use a wave maker to keep them bouncing. So this just goes up and down with the larvae in it. And that stops the larvae from sticking to the sides. uh, And it just very gently keeps them moving. And I, I think I usually do like bubbles and stuff, but I think this is it. I'm just doing this. Just they're just gonna bounce next year. Just a little bit. Hmm. And it does really nice. And then you take them out of there and then you set up a place for them to settle. So I've got a tray. I got this tray here that goes inside of this water table. It actually fits inside. Okay. And um okay. You, you you put all your settling substrates at the bottom, or I put mine at the bottom, and then I just uh, cut a hole on the side with some mesh so a little bit of water can go through, just like a drop, 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 while the corals are, while the larvae are still trying to settle. 
Once they settle, I rip those off and just run water through it fast in the tub. And uh, and then they settle. And then they sit there for a month or two as they grow. And, I, and then I move them somewhere else. And then I got to really work really hard um, because everything wants to live on the same substrates as a baby coral. And corals suck at life and everything else doesn't. Um, so sometimes you have to go to war for your babies. <laughs> so how much flow do you have? going into that tank or into settling tank? Uh, right now, I just, I literally moved them this morning or, or actually a couple hours ago. Where's my light? Now I got to make sure they're not dead. <laughs> nope, they're not dead. Um, there's no flow in there now. There's, uh, well, there's, there, I lied. I, Cause I've set it up so I can add more flow. Uh, but it's just like drip, drip, drip. That's what it's getting right now. Once they settle, I'll turn it up. And the, the reason I don't want a lot of flow through is because as the water goes out through the micro mesh, it clogs. And if you, and the, the larvae are tiny and they get stuck on yeah. the mesh and boy, that's a terrible thing to come in and go ah, ah they're stuck to the mesh my babies <laughs> I, uh, I, so for for everybody that's listening to the audio only version you should go watch the youtube version you know just for this part for sure because it's interesting if this is your first time hearing about coral spawning in a home every single thing that you just showed us is stuff you can buy at home depot yeah you know yep. Yeah, for cheap. You probably have to get the mesh somewhere, you know, to make the to make the little buckets. But like, I mean, there's no reason why we shouldn't, as a hobby, be collectively trying this more often. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I remember doing clownfish. You know, people are like, "You should do clownfish." People, are like, you should do bang eyes. Yeah. And it was like, "Oh yeah, I should. Why? Why wouldn't I do that?" And it feels like. This should be getting to the same place, and it's 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 starting to get there, and uh, you know it's you got it's it's constant problem solving, which is kind of fun. I talk about being exhausted, but it's it's awesome exhausted, you know. It's it's like wow, really good work. I mean, I I'm really invested, so I just want it to work, right? So I've got that going for me, uh, which is annoying. But uh, if if you if it's there, if it's your first time trying it, man, just to get them to go off, that's that would that would learn us a whole lot. You know, forget trying to make the whole thing happen. Just see if you can get a synchronous spawn, and then figure out what made it happen, and then we're all that much further along. Yeah, I got a, I picked up a like a super furry Millie on LFS Saturday. So it's, and it's Maricultured. And the guy said, uh, the owner said that he'd had it for like three months in that tank. And I was like, perfect. Let's perfect. go. Give me. Cause usually Maricultured, you know, if they're going to, if they're going to go, they're going to go quick, you know? And this, yeah. this yeah. was hanging out in a little like 45 gallon tank for three months. I was like, you're hardy. Let's go. Um, <laughs> uh, so are yeah. the Maricultured colonies coming back now? Do you remember the ones we used to get? that were about a fist size. Yeah. Yeah, they're back. Are those yeah. coming back because yeah. they disappeared for a long time. We we've had them out here, but not as wonderfully uh, mm. uh, um, available as they were before. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. Is it wasn't didn't Bali get shut down and then it's open again? Or you know that the whole drama is so much to pay attention to that I kind yeah. of uh, kind of stopped. So yeah. I'm not really sure what the state is now, but yeah, I just, I just know whenever I, whenever I see, you know, uh, I don't know, a whole rack full of, you know, acros with a little tag sticking out of the rock, you know what I'm talking yeah. about? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Probably want to stay away from those until they've <laughs> settled in for a while, just because I don't know, they, they just never really seem to adapt too well to the aquarium life, but there, there are some that, that do. And I'm hoping that this one did. I cut off the entire rock, all of it, and remounted it to a different plug because I don't know what you know was in that, but uh, I'm excited hmm. to to see where it goes. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I, like it. I had I had another question. 
and I forgot it. I forgot that question. It was probably the most, uh, the best question ever. <laughs> yeah. That would have led to key understandings for the future. It, yes. It would have made this a good session. <laughs> yeah. And now, now, and now, you know, now it is gone. Now uh, our fans have to well suffer talk about with, more. with this. Raj, you ask a question <laughs> and I'll, I'll think of it. I promise. <laughs> so, oh, I, I if it. this, okay, good. <laughs> Of us, yours is really good. <laughs> it's a question. Okay. <laughs> but go ahead. Let me I get mine out of the way again. first. Get yours so out. So you had mentioned uh, having Sanjay do a cycle or, you know, put his tank on a cycle. Yeah. Are you talking about his big tank? Mm-hmm. Okay. So all of the stuff, you know, that I've read with, you know, keeping it without ambient light, all of those things, does that not necessarily apply anymore? It does, but like for two or three months leading up to the spawning. Right. So there's two different things that happen, or at least this is my or our current understanding of it. I don't speak for anybody else that there's gametogenesis where the corals make their gametes. And I think that that is probably mostly temperature dependent over the course of the year. It tells the coral what to do, but I could be totally wrong. Right. I know Jamie had a spawn six months ago, too, in his tank. So I don't know what's going on. I'm sure he'll he'll let us know when he's ready to let us know. Um, what am I asking? What was your question? The, the ambient light question. Like if he's just going to ah. throw a cycle on his tank, is that, does that work? Or well, is he going to have to black it out at some point? You, at some point leading up to the spawn, you want to black it out because it seems that our best guess is that there's a, that there's a relationship between sunset and moon rise that tells the corals when to spawn. We think, I uh, you know, I, uh, I'm not going to get too complicated. We'll just leave it at that. There's definitely, there's a relationship between the lunar cycle and sunset. So you don't want to screw that up, but it seems like you could just keep them dark for two or three months before that, that the full moon that they're supposed to spawn on. And that's so the corals know what time to spawn, right? Or, or when to spawn synchronously. The rest of it, you know, the, the these are not closed up all year. These start to get closed up around um, October. Okay, and that's just like what foam core, like black, like foam that's core. That's just uh, this is a eighty twenty stand, so it's got tracks in it. So I just got acrylic, and they like sliding doors. Okay, that's cool. Um, yeah, the first year I tried it, I I didn't know, and I I don't know if anybody, you know, whatever here was probably in 2019 the first year and I had it closed all year round and it was just a nightmare and it was not fun. And, um, oh. yeah. And you don't, and then Jamie was like, Oh no, we don't do that anymore. It's like, oh, excellent. <laughs> um, although I was talking to Fugazi, Terrence Fugazi and, um, in his burned out husk of a house that they rebuilt, they've installed automatic shades um so they're blackout shades so you could put that in front of your tank you know with a with a with a edge around it and uh just have that program to close you know 10 minutes before sunset with alexa that would so, be snazzy that would be you super could do snazzy. it <laughs> when i thought about doing it those things were way too much money and now they're cheaper yeah 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 alexa it's sexy time exactly <laughs> coral sexy time exactly I'm really surprised Business my didn't play. respond just now. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty surprised mine didn't go off either. <laughs> my, mine responds from a different room. So we'll yell at the one in the kitchen, and then one upstairs somewhere starts talking and playing right. music in the basement. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like the other day, my TV started playing music that I told my Alexa to play. It broadcasted it through my TV instead of the Alexa itself. So it's too smart. Yeah. You and know, just, uh, it could totally just... get the whole color of a purple tang wrong. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Raj, you can ask your question now if you haven't forgotten. Your good question. A... Now, mine was uh, more just kind of hypothetical looking if this follows the way that the clownfish follows, right? Or yeah. that went. It, like, we get better at it. Tech got better. We, we kind of nailed it. And now, like you said, pretty much anybody can do it and they do it well and they do it a lot. So let's say we get to that stage. 
and everybody's having coral babies. Well, then the commercial aspect kicks in. And what does that really look like? Because now, look, if there's money to be made on something, they'll, somebody will figure out a way to do it. And corals, people love coral. At some point, the oceans are going to be shut off, right? Every There's not going to be any more corals being pulled out of the ocean. I mean, it's going to be aquaculture or nothing. And so now if we can get them to sexually reproduce, that changes the game quite a lot. I think so. I, uh, I think it'll be a combination of the asexual stuff we're already really good at and the sexual yeah. reproduction, right? Because I'm not going to send any of these to anybody or sell any of these babies behind me um, in a few months, hopefully. I'm going to make frags, make them healthy, and sell those out and keep these parent colonies going, right? Because um, I think it's... At this stage, inst sure. In but Instead of doing it at scale, I'm doing it like that because scale means I need a warehouse. And uh, although my wife went, what size warehouse? I went, oh, God, I can't even think about that right now, but thank you so much for supporting me. Um <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's not what you mean. What do you mean, Raj? Well, look, that that's your that's your plan because you're doing it your in your home as yeah. just a hobbyist, right? You, you but at some point farm. the commercial aspect kicks in and somebody's going to make a farm. And they're going to take it to that next level. But yeah. right now, I mean, to get from settling to frag size, how long does that take? It can take like uh, it can take as short as six months, uh, and it can take as long as a year. It depends on how much effort I think that you're going to put into feeding them and keeping them clean yeah. and making sure they're happy. Um, so the keeping them clean part, right? When, when they when they first settle and they're super weak, like you're saying, the algae is going to outcompete for space on that. Sure. On that plug. Yeah. How how do you maintain them? How do you clean them? I. This is awesome. You're going to love this. This is the most exciting thing that's ever happened in my life. Please show us baby urchins. Please show us baby urchins. No, baby Are urchins. Are you going to see butt crack? We might get a screw, glimpse of... Screw baby urchins. Rich crack. Screw baby urchins. <laughs> <laughs> that's a shirt. That is a shirt. Baby urchins. Tita has entered the chat. <laughs> baby urchins killed my dad. Um, so how I maintain them... I have everything. I can show you everything. This is so cool. I'm so excited about this this year. So I want to be able to clean them. I need to clean the substrates they're on, right? And I need yeah. to visualize them. So I've got this cool microscope. It's a soldering microscope. There's an article about it somewhere. What I'm going to do is a, a variation of what I've always done. I take – this is from Slide Lock. Uh, Ryan Snodgrass, right? And he makes this lunch kind of thing that you can put for transporting frags. It's a Tupperware. It's got a click on lid. But this is a delicious size. So I take my square flat plugs that have settlers on them, glue them to smaller stem plugs. They go in the rack, right? So I fill this whole thing with babies. Then... This is a magnet rack, right? So this goes on your tank like that. And this just clicks into place. Now it's time for me to look at my corals and do my gardening. I unclick it. I pop it up. I put it in here. And this fits under almost every microscope. So now I can go and see what I'm doing when I'm gardening, when I'm picking the babies right and how you do that is with stuff like this <laughs> you just spill the secret sauce here all over the place yes yeah. right Scalpel. so it's all just a whole bunch of tools these um this is my new set that i'm really excited about it's not dental set it's a sculpture set it's like a lost wax carving set and it's got all kinds of cool I mean, look at that, right? Oh yeah. my God, stabby! Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that'll that'll scrape really well uh, along near a baby coral, and so will that. So, 
basically you've got this and it's sitting there on your so microscope. So all your maintenance is done under a scope. Yep, and you're doing this. Yep. And for yeah, how watching long? Watching on the scope. Yeah, how long does couple, that take? Couple three months. Couple three months. Session, like per session. Wow. Oh, you never stop. You just sit there for three months. And- <laughs> <laughs> so there, that that answers that commercial viability question. Galileo looked well, to the sky and he counted the stars. Now, I, okay. <laughs> so also, I tried very hard last year to do a little bit of work. I wanted to see how little I could do, right? And I got at the end of it, I got about. 40 or 50 colonies, well, you know, uh, pieces of, of babies, yeah. 40 or 50 babies. And um, that was the least amount of work I had ever done. And uh, part of the reason for that was I was able to source urchins, baby urchins last year. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get them this year. I don't have it in me to be able to do urchins as well. It's, 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 like, it's like when I was doing octopuses and cuttlefish and people said, well, why don't you... Uh, why don't you just uh, culture your own mysis? And I said, I'm going to stab you because that's a full-time <laughs> job. And I don't need seven of those. You know, you can only do that for so long before you lose your mind. Um, so I did put feelers out. Uh, so urchins, uh, co-culturing um, baby urchins and baby snails along with the corals means I need to do less of this because they're already in there doing that. Now, it also is the case, it, turn, it looks like it's turned out, that, you know, these corals are really just need to be fed. These babies just need to be fed for the first few months. They don't really need to photosynthesize so much. So, I'm, you know, yeah. and this all came from Jamie, too, right? J- Jamie, yeah. is, Jamie is all ahead of all this stuff because he is. And it's awesome. And you could retard the algae growth just by limiting the light. Right, because the corals don't right. need it. Because yeah. you're feeding like a mofo. It's not. <laughs> it's a little algae. I'm worried about. Oh, I'm trying to change my chemistry of my water parameters by not feeding the babies. Because you know they don't need the food as long as there's no phosphate. They don't need food. Um, was that so yeah, you know, accent? <laughs> uh, no, that was <laughs> that was more of a feeble accent. <laughs> <laughs> from the feeble area of uh, North America. Uh, yeah, and so you feed them and they do fine and you, you end up scraping glass. So I think we'll figure that out more. I'm not working on that so much because I just I don't have it in me to culture urchins. To you know, it's 85 days of a larval period and then a month or two of raising them up. So uh, um, I was just talking to somebody today and they may be able to – find some for me but look i'm not scared about it this time i I used to be terrified like oh my god i have to get these urchins so the real question you know i pull it out when they're really little i'll inspect them twice a week uh and scrape as needed uh and as it goes as they get bigger you it takes less and less effort because as they get bigger they start to win uh that those micro fights like I'm holding this like this is a helpful thing to be showing you right now. <laughs> it's the ring, right? It's the uh, it's the boxing ring. <laughs> I am, but this. So I, I didn't show you the coolest thing about the the most important thing about the the frag rack that I'm going to be using, is that nothing falls out of it. Yeah. The rack doesn't come off, so I can keep the coral side the baby sideways, and that way. They don't get covered in all that dust that lands on your babies and wants to kill them as well. Huh. So we'll see if that works out. Very cool. But yeah, so Wouldn't you got they... about two months of checking them and uh, under a microscope or unless you have really good eyes, like really good eyes, like you've got 2080 vision. Um, then you've got macro vision in your eyes. I also have these. These are helpful, but it's really easier under the, the microscope. Um, these are six times. These help me see, but the microscope with the screen, the soldering microscope makes this so much easier, so yeah. much better. I'll link that. I'll link, cause we did a whole article on that or you did an article on that. Yeah. yeah we posted yeah. it on Reef Builders. Yeah. We've, I'll, I'll put that in the description below, but yeah. that's relatively cheap, right? It was like 200 bucks. 250? Yeah. 250. And it, that was a mid range one. Uh, I, I tried to get the one I could find with the best camera in it. If you don't care about the camera, get the cheapest one you can find. Yeah. Right. Um, and maybe, you know, 
maybe there's brand new ones out now because it's been six, eight months since that came out. So how much you have to do depends on how many babies you try to settle. You know, I, I do remember a question with Jamie where he was saying, well, why aren't you settling as much as you can? And it's like, because it's just me. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't have a team. Not, you know, not only do I not have the space, you know, the, the, the square footage to keep a lot of it, but, you know, I don't have, you know, that much. If I had a thousand pieces I had to keep clean, I would be nuts. Yeah. But I guess I guess in or, the future that'll just be people or a robot. You know, a robot a robot AI with a camera and a laser on a gantry that knows what baby corals look like, that goes over each rack, however big your racks are, once a day and burns to death anything that isn't a baby coral. That's pretty awesome and should be totally doable. Well, see hmm. if you had a thousand pieces, you would be forced to figure that part out right now you're settling you're selling yourself short and you're settling to manually clean them right yeah if you ballsed up <laughs> let a thousand of them settle down he's like yeah where are you going with this <laughs> oh you're right now <laughs> now <laughs> you're gonna eat you're, you've got two choices there well three choices one you can just let him die or number two, you spend all your time manually cleaning them. Or number three, you innovate and you figure out how to do it better. You're making one assumption that's incorrect. You said, <laughs> you said, if you would let thousands of them settle, as if somehow I am, I am putting the choke on and <laughs> stopping them from settling at some point. I'm I will take that on what you tell Craig's. I am not. Well, there's also this. We don't know. If I set up a thousand settling substrates and I need the space for that, there's. it's probable that everything that I'm producing is not going to settle on all of those. You know, there'll be a very small percentage of, uh, you know, like at every stage of this, you lose 90% is a, is a, is a, some people say 99%. So if I start with 200,000, you know, embryos, I'm going to lose 95% of those before settlement. That's still a lot. <laughs> right? No, actually, it's not before settlement. I tell a lie. <laughs> You're probably going to lose 95% at each developmental stage. So they're an embryo, and then they got to become a larva, and you lose 90% in there. And then they're a larva... And they've got to become a swimming larva. You lose 90% in there. Then in settling, you lose 90% in there. How many is that? Seven? 200. 200. That seems reasonable. Yeah. And then, unless you're awesome, you're going to lose 90% of those. <laughs> so it's, so it's, be it's awesome. work. Yeah, so be awesome. But, if, but be that's awesome. the thing. If you have an, a manageable amount of babies with you, you know, I got to do this with somebody who's who lives near me, actually, or ship somebody larva next year. If uh, if I can get if I get a lot of that's oh, this is a good idea. Actually, it's probably a better idea to just to settle them here. Either way, if I sent you guys five hundred larva each, and you tried to settle them and work with them, now you have a manageable hobby project of babies to take care of. So maybe that's. That's the way to go. You get one of you in your areas. Just yeah. one person does the spawning. And then you give five other people 1,000 larva. Or you give five other people a bunch of settled larva, you know, once they settle. Because – so then they go home with 20 corals that they can now, you know, it's like having a baby. A, you know, you love wiping the baby's butt. Because the baby's so cute. Well, the baby's little. <laughs> but it, you have four babies? It's not so cute. It's like the um, tadpole program. You know, you said yeah. the, the tadpole kits. That you get. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's a great idea. Maybe that's the way to do it. Hmm. So maybe next year, uh, somebody local will want some larva and be, you know, convince me that they're actually going to do it. And then I will give them some babies. And See, we'll spread look out. at that. You didn't even have to do it. Just pushing you into the exercise allowed you to innovate a little bit. Well, and honestly, 
thank you. No, I don't mean that at all. No, I do. Uh, but um, I've innovated up the butt so far this year, and I haven't gotten to that stage yet. And I'm sure there will be innovations that will happen when I get there. You know, my, my brain is not thinking at all about that stage, or maybe 2% is it, is thinking about it, because I got to deal with all this stuff. I got to hang up with you guys when it's time to hang up, which I'm not worried, and then go see if two species might spawn tonight. Yeah. That's insanity. If you told me this five years ago, you know, I, I wouldn't right. have believed you. I would not have believed you. Yeah. So, and I'm an idiot. So, cool. so if I can do it, surely one of you can. <laughs> he was going to say idiots. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure which one of you I was going to call more of an that's idiot right. than me. That that uh, that video you texted me was pretty freaking amazing. We should attach that to. to yeah. This. Video here. <laughs> yeah. Because that was that was amazing. That was like natural geographic quality, just pretty amazing. Thank you. I the slow I, motion. Uh, it's not. It's not, it's slow, not motion? slow motion. Okay, but it sure feels like a gangster video walk, right? Yeah, yeah. it sure looks like yeah. the Matrix walk, but it's not. <laughs> um, I've been chasing a piece of footage like that the whole time. And when that's happening, I'm, how long do I have? I've got to collect these. How much light can I put them? You know, and uh, so I'm thrilled at that piece of video. Like I, get, I could give up this whole endeavor now because <laughs> I've been trying to get a video right. like that. Um, I'm pretty happy that on with a, that. A, a photo, a stock photo website, and I'm going to make millions off of that. <laughs> millions on a stock, millions, a stock video website. Stock it's a good thing yeah. I didn't share it on Instagram with resharing <laughs> clicked. Yeah, I have a, I have a weird, I have a weird question to kind of close out on. Um, um, the rash lasted for six days. Yes, and yes. then cleared right up. It kept itching good, good. for about a week after that. What was the awesome. ointment you used again? I used A and D ointment. Okay. With a little bit, you know, you take um, the Polyp Lab Prime. It's the uh, Ooh. it's the the potassium dip. Sure. And you put that on the rash, and it helps. Polyp Lab yeah. is good stuff. You know, if you mix it with some Invermectin, works even faster. Oh man, and some UV. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Only sorry. Only with rare earth magnets <laughs> <laughs> and high infrared emitting <laughs> ceramics. <laughs> Use my Welcome promo code to Richard Ross at slidelock.com. Okay. <laughs> and repeat, uh, repeat podcast and his personal website, packedhead.net. <laughs> Cut right, that part I, out. Cut it. My, 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 my last question before we let you go and, you know, wrap your head around whatever is going to happen tonight. Thank you. Do you, like when you're taking that video footage, do you, even though you've seen it a couple times, several times now, get emotional? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. The, my first, what I would consider to be a transcendent experience, like a moment where you just went, oh, you know, is, I guess what people who dance with snakes in religious institutions mushrooms. say they feel. Yeah. Maybe they do. Um, or mushrooms. <laughs> Snake bites, mushrooms, it's all poison. Um, the first time was I'd worked for about a year to get uh, a pair of uh, flamboyant cuttlefish, the metasepia, right? And finally got them and put them together. And I was filming and watching, and they and they made it right in front of me. And it was like, you know, rays of God have come down into my body and, and into my brain. And I was just shocked and emotional and um and erect and flaccid and just just <laughs> all these emotions you know this was a thing i thought i would never see ever you know now i thought i'd never have them in a, an aquarium but to see them breeding and it, it was crazy i like had to write to my wife going wow is this what people who have emotions are like um <laughs> so yeah and and then i got to see that i got i had the same thing when i saw spawning for the first time in the wild screaming underwater um with matt wandell and 
yeah, every time they go off here, you that video, that piece of video, the audio is me going, oh my god, <laughs> oh holy shit, that's badass. <laughs> that's this. <laughs> Tears that's streaming the, down we your need face. that. <laughs> the whole 45 seconds of that piece of video is like, oh, this is really good, I think. <laughs> and then I then I had to get to work. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. This is then, you know, I had my friend over here yesterday and another friend was here today, and I was like, here, look at this. These are baby corals. You know, uh, you know, 500 people have seen this ever, you know, anywhere, yeah. thousand people. This is crazy. Um, I, it's emotional every time. Absolutely. And this whole thing, you know, was built in 19 for this. That was the idea with this whole, this whole rack behind me. And so to be able to every year when it works, which it has every year so far, I'm dumbfounded. I am. How could this possibly be happening? And that's what's making me think. Other people should really do it because it's not – I don't think it's the hardest thing in the world anymore. We kind of know enough about it. And boy, oh, boy, you know, um, who I can't remember who we were talking about who said they had a spawn earlier. Jason, right? Yeah. Um, I think on his video, he didn't turn his flow off, right? So you can see the bundles here and there. But mate, if you see a spawn, turn your flow off. Turn your return off. Nothing. And you just get the snowstorm going up. That's just incredible. And I want everyone to see it and experience it. It's it's insanely fulfilling and humbling and empowering and terrifying and awesome. Every time. That's so awesome. Love the emotion. Love it. it it's that's mostly what... it's mostly the scotch, but thank you. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> However you get it. Yeah. That's, no, thank you. That's it's... the thing that drives me in anything. But, you know, especially in this hobby, just seeing somebody that passionate about something, it's – that's great. That's amazing. Thank you. Because I think it's super cool. I don't know what anybody else thinks. but I think man, everybody I think else cool. outside of, like, the reef bubble thinks we're all batshit crazy. Yeah. Oh, but everybody on yeah. the inside, we all geek out. Yeah, we all geek out. So yeah, yeah. sorry about that noise. But yeah, definitely emotional. Way more emotional than like when my child was born. Well, yeah, I mean that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually was questioning if that was real or not. It's not true. <laughs> my daughter is coming home. She take they're taking a semester off, and I am over the moon excited. Not only because. I get to hang out with the beast, my daughter, who I enjoy hanging out with. But if I want to go for away for a weekend, she'll take care of all the animals. There you go. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it was terrible when she went to college because my my pet sitter was now gone. Mm. So we should have had two. Should have. Wow, we went for something really nice and emotional and touching to Rich being a jackass. See? I'll just cut it out. Give it time. <laughs> Image here. <laughs> Image here. Uh, new merch. Urchin suck. New merch. <laughs> mm. We could raffle these cups off. Yes. Drinking uh, tripores that were used in Spawn. Um, yeah. And the residual flavor um, is like an ED pill. <laughs> well, you get more if they're not washed. That's. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. That yeah, was really funny to pick weird. it up and go. I didn't wash this. Leave your saliva on there. <laughs> All right. Well, well I want to let you go. I want to let you get back to, to you know, doing your thing tonight. And I, I'm hoping you get a spawn and everything goes to plan and all of that. So uh, I do want to say thanks for joining us on the Reef Therapy Podcast today. If you've got any questions for Richard, uh, give him some time. Uh, Raj or myself, you can leave them in the comment section below. Uh, thank you to Richard for coming on today. I also want to thank our longtime sponsor of Reef Therapy, ICP Analysis. Grab some ICP Analysis tests in the description below. Make sure you leave a comment and include hashtag what's in your water, and you might just win a test. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye. See ya.